Hi, I'm Greg Gorbach with ARC, and today I'm talking with NR, the Chief Digital Officer at LTTS. Welcome, NR. Good morning, Greg. How are you doing today? So, LTTS helps manufacturing companies define their smart manufacturing roadmap. Can you talk about some of the implementation challenges here? Sure, Greg. Uh, I would like to put it across this way. Smart factories is not a one single department or one unit uh, within the manufacturing sector. We treat that as a system of systems. Typically, what three challenges customer face in the smart factories, number one, is on the choosing the right use case with the right business problem which they would like to address and with the right set of plant or a team to start with. That is the first challenge. The second challenge where the customer come across is, how do I measure my success rate? So if I put it across, what is my measure of success by making my factory uh, you know, smart? Is it going to help me on my top line or is it going to help me on the bottom line? So this is the second challenge that they want to quantify and define. Third thing they can do with one machine, one pilot, one system that is easy for them to do for anybody. But the challenge for the large Fortune 100 customers comes is how do I scale my POC to a larger scale? Because the moment you get into a scale of economy, then the interoperability issues creeps in. So you have a different machines, different OEMs, different makes, and tied up to a one business value chain. How do I derive that? That is a challenge. In LNTTS, we help our customers to overcome these three challenges. So we help them to define their level of maturity index, where do they stand, and which is the right business case they should pick to address the problem. Number two, we being an engineering company into a digital business, so we are familiar with all the products that are put up inside the manufacturing facility. So the interoperability issues, we have a predefined adapters for different protocols and communications, and at the northbound end, we have the application adapters enabled. The third thing is, Given our engineering pedigree, we start from design to support them from uh, supply chain and then the rollout. The end-to-end -end capabilities within LTTS, so we help our customers to scale beyond the pilots and POCs. Okay, great. So um, you really can't talk about smart factories and connected things without uh, thinking about security. What, what kinds of things should, uh, should folks keep in mind? Yeah. When it comes to this. See, uh, today, uh, digital as actually, Greg, if I tell it up, that's a very interesting question. Still, it's evolving question. Today, uh, digital has dissolved the boundaries. That means there is no one system where you have to be secure out. So if I put it in a very simpler terms, the earlier IT systems has got a defined entry exit criteria. Whereas when you get into a digital project or a digital product or a digital plant, it has become like a glass house. That means security has to be all over the place, what I would call as a third eye. So being it a chip, processor, gateway, application, platform, infrastructure, all together put together is a security. So today what foremost challenges today companies face in the security space is, first of all, again, I come back to the lack of standards. Second thing is the product life cycle is longer than the technology which goes inside the product. So what it happens is it is not a one-time activity of security defining a product or a plan to be secured. It is to be ongoing and it has to be continuously monitored. So it is 24x7, 365 kind of a security implementation that they have to do. So what we have taken up in the LNTTS space is very three simple things. Can I see security holistically, not from a product or anything, tying up product, process, plant, people, and operations. So one complete value chain. Point number two, the core business of our customer is in manufacturing of products or you know various uh, units, but can I be the extended arm for our customers setting up a security operation command center to be the third eye to watch over their entire operations, products, and plants, and doing a necessary upgrade, keeping this product tight enough for not making a chance for our hackers to get into. The third operation is you should always think one step ahead of the people who are trying to make the security vulnerable. So we have come up with a threat modeling, so which helps the companies to assess what are their current vulnerabilities exist in their plant or the product, and what is a remediation to fix that vulnerability, and how to maintain, sustain, and upgrade it as the technologies get upgraded over the period of time. So these are the three things that we see as a challenge and LNTT is addressing for our customers. Okay, uh, switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, we hear a lot about digital twins. Yes. 
And um, it's easy to conceptualize a digital twin of a pump or a compressor or something like that, but I suspect it gets a little more complicated if you want to model a whole factory or a whole plant. Absolutely. Can you comment about that? Sure, you're absolutely right, uh, Greg. Your observation is uh, dot on. Uh, the reason here is many companies who are attempting to do digital factories per se are predominantly an IT combination of company who get into a digital factory. But what a digital twin required in the digital factory is an engineering pedigree to address it. In this case, LNTTS is being an engineering company who are into digital. Given our engineering DNA, that makes quite easier for us to get into a digital twin in the factory per se. Point number one, today, it comes with a lot of engineering physics when modeling the entire factory. It is not about one plant, one operation, one systems. It is bringing out uh, holistically multiple subsystems into a one single thing. Number two, what is a today deterrent in the digital twin on the factory side is uh, a trade-off between the cost viability versus the business benefit. Okay, it, even it is a still a debatable question even in the product because the tons of sensors that you require to make a product intelligent enough to mirror it into a virtual world is not an easy task. Okay, and uh, that needs a lot of fine tuning in terms of bringing up the prediction reliability into the product or the factory. Okay, the third uh, most significant challenge in digital twin today is how I can do it for one plant, one system, one time. Can I able to scale it and do it up across my multiple subsystem, connecting my whole value chain? Is a scaling is a big challenge, and this provides a lot more complexity in terms of predictability because each subsystems are tied to one another, or there is a dependency factor between multiple subsystem inside the factory. So you have to figure out that integration into a single arm of you know execution when you define a digital twin at the factory level. But I'm very proud to say that we have successfully done for one of the confectionery uh, line of business customer in European market, where we have helped them to do a virtual simulation of his factory. And we basically assessed them what is his level of maturity today in digital context, where do they stand? And what is the digital quotient that they should apply in the subsystem to reach to that level of digital twin at the factory level? So right from uh, engineering design, uh, throughput optimization, process efficiency, quality you know, validations, and then productivity. So we covered that six subsystems into the factory level, and we are able to successfully launch for them in the European market. That boosted that confidence that we can go beyond and do that for different line of customers in this space. Well, I love to hear these, these stories about uh, you know, new technologies really delivering value. And uh, so thank you for that one. Um, Another area that's um, based on some emerging and dis potentially disruptive technology is, uh, the, is the area of augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, can you comment on some use cases in this, in this space that go beyond uh, training and, and service up? Uh, yes, correct. Well, most of the people see AR, VR like a toy. You know, they see that it is not adding value, it is effectively used in the training and so on. But how do we see from LNTTS and where customers have benefited out of is, we've gone beyond that training and development, okay? We started using AR, VR tied up to a business use case, either to improve their quality inspection or to reduce the rate of defects that comes into the product cycle, okay? So a couple of examples I'd like to take you to bring you to your attention, Greg. Point number one, we brought quality as an ingredient using AR, VR. That means imagine you are in an assembly plant in an automotive manufacturer segment. So there are sequence of step as per your engineering process that you're supposed to assemble. If there is a worker who misses a step number eight and he or she tries to move to step number nine, so my virtual eye, which has been seeing the sequence of product through a vision-based camera will highlight that individual that he or she has missed up that step number eight. The reason how this is possible, the earlier assembly was happening all through the 2D drawings. So you get a 2D printout and you have a sequence of steps and you put it. Now AR VR helped us to provide this as a 3D virtual model to our you know, workers inside the plant. That helps them to do that. So that is point number one. Point number two, in terms of a quality inspection, if there is an injection of a quality or a defect that is happening in the assembly plant, 
through a virtual coach or virtual trainer kind of a concept so that means somebody is watching the inspection of quality at every stages rather than keeping that as one last stage gate at the end of line inspection so we made quality as an ingredient so that virtual coach through an ar vr model will alert the worker what kind of a remediation or correction that he or she has to make it into the product that means the error is not carry forward that is the second step third step now as you rightly mentioned greg it also about the uh, skill set availability and usability of that so we used here we are to blend that skill gap so what happened suppose my sme is in one part of the geography and my workforce is on the another part of the geography but they need the assistance of that we are using ar vr as one of the tool to get my sme support in terms of my design consideration validation or product concept development or rollout kind of a thing so we are effectively putting ar vr for two uses either to help our customers to make money out of it in terms of productivity improvement less quality rejections and so on or in terms of save money in terms of process optimization process efficiency you know better use of utilizations and so on so in our uh, view ar vr is a boon uh, to our customers to enhance their either the top line or bottom line and that's how ltts have been delivering them to our customers tell me about moving from predictive to to prescriptive analytics yeah Correct. Right. That's a quite an interesting area for our customers and LNTTS in this space. Uh, we've been uh, doing this predictive analytics business for last almost eight to ten years because we, being an engineering company, helping our product manufacturers to make their product smart, connected, intelligent. So we created a library of digital signatures which tells the product anomalies and predefined. now we are helping our customers to make their product intelligent by bringing the artificial intelligence and machine learning into that algorithm of the machines where machine becomes self aware of what is their current health today now moving on to the prescriptive side of it since we are already having this defined libraries available with us now we are able to give a option to our customers to do a what if scenario analysis based on the current operational health of their assets so given the current spectrum having the predefined library for different protocols different machines at the plant level and made that as a model for our customers to use it for what if scenario helps lnttts to position way ahead of our competitors in the prescriptive analytics moving away from predictive analytics okay great well thanks nr this has been a lot of interesting discussion today thanks greg pleasure meeting you here as well this is greg gorbach i've been speaking with nr from ltts mm-hmm.